For University of Illinois Extension, I'm Todd Gleason. Winter nutrition for the cow-calf operation is key. It may be the best opportunity to positively affect real income. This was the message heard during the annual Beef and Beyond Conference. It was clear and concise. The winter feeding program at a cow-calf operation separates profitable farms from less profitable operations. It depends a lot on stored feed, says University of Illinois beef cattle specialist Dan Scheich. How much stored feed are they having to purchase and what is their winter feeding program? We would like to graze as many days as we can, but if we can't graze, we have to feed them something and what's the least cost approach? The least cost only works if the cows meet acceptable performance standards. Uh, these are to maintain appropriate body condition, to calve once a year, and to wean off as heavy a calf as possible. Um, but there's more. We've not given much consideration in the past to what is happening to the fetus that's inside. We focused on the cow, we focused on that calf that's nursing her, and yes, we want to make sure we get her bred, but we haven't really thought about, okay, now the cow's bred, and not only is she nursing that calf, but she also has a developing fetus inside, and the nutrition and the management that we're imparting on that cow also could have impacts on that developing fetus. And there's plenty of data from uh, human epidemiological studies to uh, other animal models suggesting that maternal nutrition or nutrition during gestation can have lifelong impacts on, that, on the progeny. The results with beef cattle are mixed in this area of study and varies from region to region, mostly as it relates to available forages. This seems obvious, but the clear message is if the cows are in poor body condition and not being fed enough, there's a great deal of risk to hurting the calf. Under winter feedlot conditions, this means the properly managed cow produces a calf which eventually yields better marbling. Heifer calves kept for breeding benefit from good nutrition in the womb too. Uh, they weigh more, mature earlier, and have better conception rates. All this later in life when they're a year or two years of age was set when they were three or four months as a developing fetus through the end of gest mid and late gestation. Mid gestation is when a lot of the uh, fetal development occurs. Late gestation is where a lot of fetal growth occurs. Now on the other side of that what we've seen is if your cows are in good body condition, if you keep them in that body condition score five and six that we always tell producers that they should, a short-term restriction doesn't have a large impact. But if the cow's already thin, if she's a body condition score four, and she's already on that marginal line where uh, you should be concerned about her and you're restricting her, you should anticipate that you could be restricting that fetus. Because if she's in good condition, even if you're not feeding her enough, she'll mobilize body reserves. Some of that extra body condition she's carrying, she'll mobilize those reserves and still supply the appropriate nutrients to the fetus. The body condition scores run from one to nine with scores of five or six considered optimum, scores of eight or nine are too fat, scores below four are too thin. For University of Illinois Extension, I'm Todd Gleason.